if you are somebody who doesn't like selling, if you are somebody who is here with us at best practice, and if you are somebody who's listening to the technology make us have problems, then you're right here at Best Practice TV where everything's live on a Wednesday and a Thursday. Um, welcome back to Best Practice TV. Uh, same time uh, every week, yesterday and today, with different tips and tricks for you guys uh, and a little bit of self-help if you like. So today's all about selling and specifically prospecting. If you're not on our email list, go to bestpractice.biz, scroll down and get your name and email on the email list so you get the notifications each week on the topics that we're talking about. Vanessa and the team again, jumping on board and helping me with everything that they need to do. So uh, good morning all, um, got, the, uh, got everyone back in again. So um, hit the comments there. Let me know your, obviously where you're watching from and I'll see who's watching because your user ID will come up. Uh, we're obviously live here on LinkedIn and live on YouTube as always. So um, thanks for joining us. This morning, I'm gonna talk about prospecting. It's gonna be very LinkedIn specific this morning. I need to actually turn off my phone so it doesn't ring on you guys. Um, so we're going to talk about prospecting and we're going to go back and do some uh, a little bit of revision. Um, have you ever heard the term, our pro those products or services, they just sell themselves? It's like iPhones, for example. Um, iPhones, and I love these things, they're a, they're a really good example. I can do, I can pretty much run the whole business from this device, uh, doing some really cool stuff through the week, um, you know, logging into different systems and processing payments paying suppliers, approving payroll, doing all those great things that I do, selling, prospecting, social media, taking photos of the family, listening to music, they're great devices. They basically just sell themselves. Um, so I've got this term up here, they sell themselves. And, and wouldn't it be great if you're somebody who hates selling and if you're somebody that, you know, you don't feel confident yet being a salesperson um, and you're not, you don't feel great at selling yet. You know, we've been talking the last couple of weeks about that keyword yet from the uh, work of Carol Dweck in her book, Mindset, where she's trying to help people be in a learning mindset and a growth mindset. So my question to you is, are you in a fixed mindset or are you in a growth mindset? And when you look around at you, when you look around yourself at people and you ask yourself that question, are they, you can ask them, you can say, are you in a fixed mindset or are you in a growth mindset? It could be a little bit rude if you haven't got the right level of rapport with people, but it is something to understand in terms of how we can actually improve. So if you're somebody who doesn't like selling yet, that's what these sessions are all about. They're helping you feel more confident about how to approach it and go out and practice. So when we see products and services and we hear that statement, they just sell themselves, that whether it's a product or a service, they just sell themselves. That's because the product or service has established its, its, itself in front of a really clearly defined audience. And for the right buyer, sorry, we've got to get the microphone in the right place for the podcast. So those of you listening to the podcast after we've recorded the live event, um, welcome. Welcome on board. Thanks for listening to the Kobe Simmet audio experience. Luke's just thrown the microphone at me and said, make sure I'm talking into the microphone. So um, with regards to that, I want you guys to understand that if you have specifically targeted people you seek to serve, then the products and services will just sell themselves. You can keep improving, obviously, the quality of the product and you keep refining it you know, based on customer feedback, uh, but that is something to consider. So I just thought I'd put that up there as a starting point. Let's get you going and let's get your products and services so they just sell themselves. Now, it's counterintuitive. We don't actually have to do anything with the product um, and we don't actually have to do anything with the service. We don't have to improve it. We just got to find the right people. And then the products and services that you have will just sell themselves. And so that's what this session today is all about. It's about prospecting. A little bit of summary and um, uh, going back over some other stuff, back to the 101 principles. Remember that we're talking about this straight line process, that every sale is exactly the same. It has an open and it has a close. Now, there's no point in opening a sale or starting to talk to someone about a sale or selling to somebody if they're just not interested in your product. There's no point in selling me, um, you know, there's no point in selling me a sports car because I'm just not in, interested in buying buying a sports car. I drive an old truck. It just happens to be outside the window there in the car parking. Um, so you, if you were a sports car salesperson, you would really struggle to sell me a sports car right now. So, you know, when we look at the products and services, um, you know, uh, for example, I, I'm, I'm a vegetarian by because of my health and my health requirements. So it's kind of pointless trying to sell me a steak don't get me wrong, I love eating steak and I love eating meat, but it doesn't agree with me from a health perspective. And so I eat mostly vegetables, occasionally a little bit of chicken and fish. 
So it's something that, you know, as a meat salesman or a butcher, you would really struggle to sell to me unless I'm buying meat for my family, for my son or for my wife. Um, you know, we're obviously avid meat eaters, but it's something that I can't do because of my high blood pressure and my high cholesterol. I eat mostly vegetarian. So from that perspective, when products just sell themselves, that we can do our massive information gathering that we were talking about last week. We do our presentation and then we do our close. What I don't want you guys to be doing, and I just want to re remind everybody, don't show up and throw up. And so, and don't over pontificate, don't get paralyzed. So it's about collecting the information first because you're validating if the problems exist that your products solve. Now, if the customer is very aware of their problem, problem and they can see your product or service can solve the problem, then the product or service will just sell itself. And that's part of this massive information gathering. So that's your revision for this morning is to understand open, collect information, asking lots of questions. The best salespeople on the planet ask more questions. They don't do any presentation because they use the questions to lead the witness to the close. And then they close. And what we're doing over here on closing is we're dealing with objections. Now, by identifying the right buyers, you will get less objections. You will get less objections. So when we identify up front that, yes, we found the right person. Yes, this person has the problem that I solve. Yes, this person understands they have the problem. Yes, this person has some money that they can pay for it. Yes, they've got approval to go ahead. Yes, they're interested in it. Yes, they're in the market for it. Then you won't get any objections up front. They'll just basically say, right, when can I do this? Because I need this right now. So we're dealing in this closing phase, we're dealing with objections. And when you get lots of objections, it means you've done a pretty poor job of understanding all of their challenges and their pain points up front. But that's not what this session's about today. That's just revision. Today, we're talking about prospecting. And I want to specifically just quickly talk about the, a couple of different ways that we can prospect um, in terms of prospecting. You can obviously do lots of networking. Now, the first thing that I want you to understand is not what you know. It's not who you know. It's who knows you. And that is why social media is so important. And that's why getting out there and putting yourself out there and getting, you know, being known for what you're good at and what you're interested in and what you want to talk about. That's why this part of the top of the funnel activity that I do with social media is so important so that more and more people know me and then they, can, they know that they can come to me and ask questions. So what I'm showing you right now is what I, do, what I do to get known. So it's not what you know. It's not who you know. That's a false statement. It used to be it's not what you know. It's who you know. That's rubbish. It's not what you know. It's not who you know. It's who knows you. So you've got to get known by more people. So you can obviously do lots of networking. You can go, you know, when COVID-19 is finished, we can go out and we can talk to people and we do networking events. Um, we can meet people. But today I want to specifically talk a lot about LinkedIn. So let's just quickly talk about LinkedIn. We just happen to be live on LinkedIn. It's one of my favorite platforms. Um, we're fortunate enough for LinkedIn to give me the live functionality, and I really appreciate LinkedIn for that, and I want to thank them for doing that and, and letting me come on board on their live testing and their beta testing of the LinkedIn Live platform. So let's talk about the use of LinkedIn. Now, yes, we are over on YouTube as well, live right now. We broadcast live into a couple of places, but LinkedIn is excellent. So over when we're starting to think about our products and services, I want to ask you guys a question. For, so for everybody listening right now, first and foremost, let me know where you're watching from. So hey, Helen. Hey, Stan. Hey, P Van Man, Manen. Um, so uh, welcome aboard, everybody. Enrique, uh, Antonio, thanks for jumping aboard. So let me know um, where you guys are watching from. Um, it's always exciting to see where everyone's coming in from around the world. Um, so let me know what's happening. But let's talk about LinkedIn. I want you guys to think about from your business's perspective or your organization. Now, also, if you're an employee, I want you to think about your LinkedIn profile. And if you haven't got a LinkedIn profile, get across onto that plat platform and set yourself up with a free LinkedIn profile. Now, there's a couple of fields in the database on LinkedIn that are important when you set yourself up. Now, you obviously go and, you know, you put your name in. So you've got a name. That's the first thing. You've got your great picture. Let me just draw my picture. This is when I had hair. Here it is. It's a cartoon session here from um, Kobe at Best Practice. Here we go. Hang on, let me do that again. Bit out of practice. I'll do my bald head this time, actually. There's my bald head. I like that. There we go. Look at that. Kobe, big nose, big mouth. There we go. Look at the chin. There we go. Cartoons with Kobe this morning. There we go. So you put your great picture there on LinkedIn. We put our name in. We put our title. Okay. 
And it's got title, T I T L E. L E, there we go. Can't spell. Thank you, Luke, for your assistance. Your name, your title, your company, your skills, your positions, and your history. Um, and that's going to track time because you put in dates. So what LinkedIn finds out from putting in your positions is how much experience you've got. Now you can actually run filters against this by your, based on your title, they can guess seniority. So I want you to look at your LinkedIn profile and then I want you to understand that this is a database and you can search this database and that search functionality in LinkedIn is absolutely magical. And I use it to, I use it a lot to find out who I wanna to talk to, where are they, what are they doing? You can search against any of these things. You can search against name, but when you're prospecting, that's kind of irrelevant. What you want to start thinking about is, I want to ask you guys a question. This is the time to take notes. What are the top five job titles of a boss that you want to work for? What are the top five job titles of somebody you want to buy from you? So your, buy, you know, your customer, what are the top five job titles? So mine are general managers, CEOs, business leaders, uh, owners, founders. Those are the types of position descriptions that I search for offering the services of best practice and reaching out to people and connecting with people. So I want you to think about if it's a design engineer or if it's a, a building manager or a property manager or a risk manager, or if it's a, um, you know, or a, or a commercial manager, start thinking about the job type, the top four or five or six job titles of the people that you sell to or that your organization sells to. And that's going to give you some numbers in terms of who's out there. So if you wanted, you know, if you've got two screens running right now, open up LinkedIn and start fiddling around and doing some searches. Now I know that for some of the job titles that I specifically target, there's 34,000, 50,000, 100,000, 200,000. And you can now start to look at region because LinkedIn asks you for your location. Now, if you're looking for a property manager or a commercial manager or a general manager or a CEO or a managing director, you can also look in specific locations. Now, LinkedIn hasn't quite got down to, uh, you know, prov <coughs> hasn't got to a province level, but, it, but, it, but you put in your city. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can search title by city. You can also search by skills. Now, you might not know what titles to search, but you can start looking at skills project management, design management, risk management, sales, business development, advertising, social media. And you can start searching for company and then you could search for the, a company name you want to target or an organization you want to target and then risk management or property management or procurement to get hold of people. So you can search that and we'll start bringing up results. You can also then search by location. Now, when you buy the LinkedIn advertising product that we do, we do a lot of in LinkedIn advertising and we, and we target specific people to do awareness advertising. It's not lead generating advertising for us. It's awareness advertising. We start targeting location, skills, and sometimes company. We do about, at any one time, we could have 27 different types of ad campaigns running on LinkedIn. And what we basically do is we target company uh, specifically. And as people come onto our website, we use an app that identifies, that tries to identify the company that they're working for. And I can, I can explain that to you. If you want to send me a direct message, I can explain how that works. Then we take those companies that we can see that visited our website and we put them into a LinkedIn ad campaign and we retarget them on LinkedIn. So they might've come to our website, but then they will start seeing ads out on, uh, on, on other advertising pages. So we'll retarget them using Google advertising um, or, and or uh, in LinkedIn. But specifically in LinkedIn, we add the company name to a campaign. We add the skills to a campaign and we also add the location to a campaign. Sometimes we add title. So I just want you to understand from a prospecting perspective that you can start to target people and then to socially, uh, socially network, if you like, you can start liking their posts because everybody likes it when they get lots of likes on their posts. So don't feel like you're stalking somebody when you go on specifically, there's someone specifically that you want to target and talk to, there's nothing wrong with going and searching their LinkedIn profile, having a look at their posts, and then starting to read their posts and hitting that like button because everybody likes to get likes and everybody likes to get comments. And nice comments saying that's an excellent post or that was very informative 
they will start to see that you're liking their posts and that you're a follower of theirs. And then you can reach out to people and you say, hey, I really like the content that you're posting. Uh, you know, what's your view on op having an opening question? And it's still back to that same sales thing. It's not buy my stuff. It's not buy my shit. And I apologize, I got asked to stop cussing on, on my videos this week by one of our followers. Um, but it's not, it's not buy my stuff. It's not like, you know, dating where you say, hey, you know, let's go on a date. Let's have sex before we have dinner. When you, you know, it's, it's about building a relationship. And so massive information gathering with those people is they might not be in the market. Yes, they might fit your criteria, but they might not be in the market for your product or service. So you can start a conversation and it's not about what you know. It's not who you know. It's who knows you. Your objective is for them to get to know you, not for you to sell your stuff initially. So you've got to, it's a sequence of events, which is getting them to know you and know that you exist. And then know that you're the person to call when they have that product that they want to buy and then your product or service will sell themselves. So LinkedIn is excellent. I want you to practice that. That's your homework is to do some searching. I want you to search job title on LinkedIn. I want you to search for the company on LinkedIn. When you search for a specific company on LinkedIn, you'll get a whole lot of search results at the top. Luke and I have been practicing how we can, um, um, how we can sell. Hey, Luke, LinkedIn looks like it might be frozen. So um, what, what we want to do is we want to then have, um, we want to have StreamYard and we're going to be able to show our desktop and have people understand that they can actually then go and, um, and go and do that. Oh, there we go. Seems to be working again. Okay, so um, any questions from anybody? Um, hello, Helen from Port Stephens. Uh, what a beautiful part of the world. One of my favorite uh, favorite spots. Um, okay, has anyone got any questions on this so far? Uh, hit the like button if I'm saying stuff that is making sense and is useful. Um, hit, the, um, hit the comments there and let me know where you're watching from. Looks like we've got about half a dozen people there on LinkedIn at the moment, and I can't see YouTube at this stage. Um, okay, maybe just hit click for me. Uh, where we go? That's no, all good. Okay. That no, can't see. Okay, doesn't matter. Um, okay, so that's prospecting uh, at the moment. Like that's COVID nineteen prospecting. I'm not going to sit here and say you know all these other different sorts of prospecting. You know, go through the phone book. You know, search for companies on the internet. You can obviously do that, but for most of us, we know the companies that we should be targeting. We know where the potential buyers are for our products and services. Um, so it's starting to think about that. So a couple of things, obviously, a few reminders, you know, step one or checklist number one, make sure we start with why. You know, I started this presentation this morning with if, if you're somebody who doesn't like selling, if you're somebody who, you know, doesn't want to get involved in this, you're not good at this yet. You know, we're very passionate here at Best Practice about helping organizations to grow and improve and develop work your way up that hierarchy of needs, help you improve your sales, help you improve your revenue, help you improve your profitability, help you get organized, manage safety, deal with your environmental sustainability, have good risk management. That's the stuff we're passionate about. That's me starting with why. So I want you to start with why. Start with telling people when you're talking to them and you're prospecting, this is what I'm passionate about. Get known in your social media for what you're passionate about. Stay in your swimming lane. I'm passionate about helping, you know, Stan, I'm passionate about public safety and helping people have an amazing experience in swimming pools and the outdoor industry and at beaches. You know, stay, you know, that's really important to be known for that and being known for that person who's the advisor and the giver of information around that stuff. So we want to start with why. We want to start thinking about the problem right now in COVID-19 that we're very good at solving. What's that focus point for the problem? What's the problem that we solve? Who are the most likely people to have that problem? Who are the most likely people to have that problem? That's what we're using LinkedIn for, to go searching for those people. Then we can start searching LinkedIn. Okay, but have a fiddle with LinkedIn. Like It doesn't have to be any particular order, but I want you to start to go, all right, I've got to get my why right. I can start with why. I can understand the problem I solve right now. Who? And then obviously we can search LinkedIn. Now, this isn't about pivoting. It's not about you know, pivoting right now, but it's about getting to know who's out there for the existing products and services that we currently have and selling that. We can do a whole nother session on 
you know, looking at the marketplace and doing your market research. I'm doing a lot of market research, was doing it before we started this live stream this morning and starting to get an understanding of what we've got going on and, and different stuff that's happening. I have a huge meeting this afternoon at four o'clock around a whole product range, which you guys will hopefully see globally as we help people with best practice. Um, so um, that's what I want you guys to understand. So that's it for today. Um, quick one, quick game's a good game. Um, I've talked about LinkedIn. If you've got any questions or you need help with LinkedIn, uh, specifically, if you want to know how to do the searches, uh, I can show you the advertising platform. Uh, we don't sell any of those services. We just use them ourselves and I'm here to help you guys. So that's something that you can consider. So if you want to know more about how you can use and leverage LinkedIn, let me know. Um, if you want to know more about prospecting and sales, obviously let me know. So uh, that's it. So there's no questions this morning. Now's your chance to ask questions. If you want any help with anything, uh, hit that like button for me if you're sitting and listening um, and you just got things going on. So I know that I haven't put everybody to sleep uh, here this morning and let me know where you're watching from. If you're watching this after the event, please let me know where you're watching from. I get all those notifications on, uh, on obviously LinkedIn and YouTube and hit that like button. Okay. Um, who we got there? Excellent. We got a good team. I see Charles, Caitlin, Vanessa, Stan. Excellent. Okay, cool. All right, everybody. Well, that's it from me this morning. Uh, so do go and have a practice and do that search. This applies to whether you're selling a product or service as a business or whether you're uh, looking for a job and you're currently unemployed. Uh, you can do the same search. Search job title, search companies, and you can start to learn the people. And the pe then you can go and see those people on LinkedIn and start liking their posts and sending them direct messages and commenting on their posts. Um, and, and that's going to, you get an understanding of what they like, what they don't like and what they're into and what they're passionate about. Okay. My name's Kobe Simmett. I'm the CEO here at Best Practice. And as always, if you don't see me out there because everyone's in lockdown right now, you definitely see me right here next time on Best Practice TV. If you've got questions, send me a direct message and I will see you soon.